Hey guys, welcome back to the show. We're back at Camera Store uh, Showroom with Yuho from Camera Rescue, going through the top 10 cameras of 2019. And number four is the Pentax 6x7. Do remember there's an article and a video at Camera Store's website featuring all of this. We're gonna be talking about what we're gonna show you in video form, what are your alternatives and why people probably picked the Pentax. Yuho even has a surprise for us with the TLRs. So Yuho, why do you think the Pentax has all the hype? Well, I mean, it, uh, three, four years ago, a Pentax 6.7 was very, very hard to, to kind of sell. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember Camera Store having uh, eight at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but then something happened a year and a half ago, two years ago, and the 6.7 started to be very hot and it's now harder than the Hasselblads, it's ha harder than the Mamiya 7, mm -hmm. it's hot harder than the Leica M3 in mm -hmm. this year's list, which is like quite remarkable. Yeah, one thing to note is most people that go for the Pentax 6x7 are usually always wanting the option with the 105 f 2.4, which is, you know, the hype lens. This we have here is the 90 f 2.8, which is also a very good alternative. Focuses a little closer, only 0.4 or f 0.4, a less light coming in. But the good thing about the Pentax is it's a 35 millimeter on steroids. Basically, if you're used to shooting 35 millimeter cameras, either digital or film, you're gonna be very you know comfortable with it because some medium formats have a different use, but this is simple. Yeah, uh, I think it's the look that people go for. It's a very shallow depth of field with the 105 or the 90 or uh, in fact the 135 and the 150 are the best for that. But mm -hmm. And they're super cheap compared to the 105 lens. Yeah. Uh, so you should go for one of those. Yeah, basically the best option for a Pentax alternative for less money would be a Pentax body with not the 105. The yeah. 105 sometimes on its own goes for around 500 euros, sometimes more. Yeah. So like the 135 I actually got from Camera Store for under 100 euros. Yeah. And you can focus really close because it's the macro version. The 150 is an f2.8, which we do remember longer lenses have that compression, which make the background blurrier. Yeah, the Pentax 6.7 doesn't work in a studio essentially unless you have the leaf shutter lenses which are only two special lenses mm -hmm. and they cost quite a lot of money. But uh, what do you want to talk about these guys? Well, the good thing about the Pentax line, even though most people are looking for the 105, is they have a huge selection of lenses and huge lenses. This is a 500 a uh, 5.6 lens that you can see here is almost bigger than, yeah, basically the whole table. And you can go up to a 1000 millimeter lens. You can yep. go to specialize for fisheye lens like this 30, I think there's a 35 fisheye lens. The yep. Mamiya versions are 37 millimeters. So this could be really good for different angles and maybe using it for skateboarding and stuff. Do remember the flash sync kind of uh, stinks because it's a 130th. But if you're shooting natural light, it's a great option because the Pentax 6x7 has a 1-1000 shutter speed, which is usually pretty rare for medium format. And if you want the fast uh, flash sync, what should you get? Uh, you can get the, well, apart from other cameras, as you said, the leaf shutter lenses, yep. which are the 90 and 165, but you can get cameras that have leaf uh, shutter lenses on their whole line, pretty much. That would be something like the Mamiya RZ or RB. We have an RB over here. They are bulkier, but when you're shooting six by seven, and I have to say that from experience, I own the six by seven Pentax and the Mamiya and actually a Bronica. When you want to shoot vertical on the Pentax, the only way to shoot vertical would be to hold it vertical if you're handheld holding it. But if you're a tripod, it's very uncomfortable. There's no hot shoe or cold shoe unless you have the wooden handle. So making it vertical gets pretty annoying. And then this comes into play with a great option with the turning back. And weight-wise, there isn't that much of a difference, honestly. Like, these all all are so big that you'll need a bag. You'd... And a tripod if you're shooting with a little bit less than low light. Yeah, so, like, essentially, they are so big. Um, that leads me to my point. Like This is Yuho's point, which I he has to convince me. Yeah, well... Uh, from the use that internet shows people are using the Pentax 6.7 for, I would actually not go for a Pentax 6.7. I would go 
for a nice TLR. This is a Rolex Flex uh, something something something. Uh, but the point being that if you are shooting uh, Pentax 674 portraits, you are going to on location, uh, you are looking for a little bit special out of focus rendering, mm -hmm. and um, you're looking for a big uh, negative size. And the Rolex Flex or a Minolta Auto Cord or a, even a Rolex Cord makes that happen for much, much less money. Uh, if you get the Rolex Flex 2.8, it's about the same mon money as a Pentax 67 body. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand that like it might not make sense, like TLR, SLR, they are different worlds. Yes. But no, like this is very small. You could mm -hmm. carry it along. You, if you have never done medium format and you're buying your first medium format as a Pentax 67, I would go with a Jashica D or Jashica C, like a 200 euro uh, TLR. Yeah. And just test out 120 before taking the leap of faith to Pentax 67 mm -hmm. and then just being annoyed at the whole thing. Yeah, one thing that's not being mentioned here is the SLRs have mirror slap and mirror slap on 6x7, and you can probably hear that with the microphone, let me put this here, is, wait, let me advance, is pretty hefty. The TLRs don't have a mirror because you're using the viewing lens and then with the taking lens so there's not that much vibration if you're shooting at slow shutter speeds or maybe you know something like that a tlr is really really quiet no vibrations whatsoever do remember that people searching for the pentax 6x7 and this is the 6x7 usually are there's three models or right. actually four pentax 6x7 6x7 non-mlu uh well 6x7 mlu non-mlu 67 and 672 so do remember there's four models you got to check for specs what you want yeah. but you there's options basically uh, and that's also one of the reasons it's probably so high in the list because people just google pentax 67 like it's the same thing but it's mm -hmm. it's essentially 40 years of of cameras, of cameras in one one google phrase yeah um but yeah i think uh, and one also, uh, addition to the TLR world is that, you know, it's, well, uh, if you're doing street photography, which Pentax 67 seems to be a thing also now, it, I, I wouldn't, like, I, I don't know if it was designed for that, but, yeah. like, people go shoot street with Pentax 67. A Rolex Flex, it would be much smaller. Yeah, but you could have famous photographers as Vivian Meyer doing street photography with TLRs and doing a great job. Another camera we wanted to mention, even though it's not a 6x7, but it has a similar aspect ratio, are 6 for 5 cameras, okay? When you're going for a 6x7 SLR, you're going to go for the around 1,000 euros whole kit. Yeah. So let's say the Mamiya RB, RZ, Pentax, you know, the Bronica may be a little cheaper because yeah. it's the underdog and the GS1 is not so common. But 645 will give you more shots, will yeah. give you a little bit better depth of field. It'll give you more um, wider lenses, so like f2 or f1.9, yeah. and they even have autofocus. Yes, I would say that a very good option for a Pentax 67 for the use that the internet is using the Pentax 67 would be a Mamiya 645 autofocus with a 80 millimeter 2.8 autofocus lens because mm -hmm. the most uh, like like a Pentax 67 is hard to focus and at 2.4 it's very hard to focus and it's very hard to find a co copy that is so aligned that you're what you see is actually what you get. And you can't change the focusing screens on the Pentax 6x7s except for the 672 unless they do it at a you know proper repair. Yeah. So the fact that in the Mamiya line you can change the prisms and you can change the focusing screens and such is a great thing. Also, the, we were mentioning before doing the video, the Mamiya 645, you can get a camera with three lenses and start shooting for the price of a Pentax 67 with a one lens. Yeah. And the Pentax 67s are well, let's say one has 21 light seals to change in a Pentax 67 if you do a proper repair for a Pentax 67. Mhm. Mm 
So essentially very few are repaired properly. Like yeah, and one thing that I think is also very interesting is the Pentax 67 being a 35, uh, you know, bigger camera, you can't change mid-roll. So yeah. no interchangeable backs. Yeah. With the 645s, with the Bronica version, with the Mamiya uh, RZ and RBs, you can always change mid-roll or have different backs. So if yeah. you're shooting wedding photography, a lot of people do wedding photography with a Pentax, but a lot of people do it with 645. You gotta take that into consideration. You know, you save some money, save some space, yeah. save some shots, and change film if you want. Yeah, and uh, as a, if you buy a Pentax 6.7 because you're thinking about it, you're looking, uh, watching this video, then skip the 105, buy a 90 mm -hmm. or a 75. 90 will let you focus close enough. The 105, if you're doing portraits, that close focus will be super annoying. You end up getting a extension tube <laughs> and if you want to go for the unicorn lens get the 75 2.8 because Ooh. i had that lens mm. and it's to me stellar yeah. but if you don't have all the money because that lens can be over a thousand on its own yeah. get the 75 f 4.5 which is yeah. like 80 euros yeah. and it does a great job too also you want to consider if you're shooting uh, slrs in six by seven there's alternatives like the um gs well gs1 we have the Mamiya RZ Fuji GW670, which yeah. is a rangefinder style. Yeah. We have the Mamiya 7, which is usually a little higher priced. Yeah, yeah. And we have the Norita and the Pentacon 6. Yeah, Pentacon 6 and the, the Russian Kiev 6C and uh, Arax things. Those are the, the cheap option for a Pentax mm -hmm. uh, 6, 7, having essentially the same SLR uh, kind of... Uh, yeah, the use. Use, but you know you need to get a good version and getting a good version of those is even harder than getting a good version of the pentax 6 7. yeah but remember the pentacon 6 uh it shoots six by six is basically a 35 millimeter also you know chunkier and has amazing uh lenses you have the 82.8 but then you also have the one i think 120.8 180 2.8 yeah which are amazing yeah and also very inexpensive so if you really want the pentax and maybe don't like the options we presented before try to find for a good copy of the pentacon yeah that would be the cheap cheap same 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 kind of thing yeah so yeah as always you have the article linked below and the video going through the top 10 this was the top four for the Pentax 6x7. Yep. Thanks for watching guys. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions. Uh, see you in the next one.